His skin is white just like a ghost Thick Irish roots and his blonde hair And he sounds like a Chicago super fan A music nerd with a collection Of CDs from here to there Yes, Andy Dare is in Chicago Interviewing and barbecuing It's the end Welcome, friends, to another episode of The Andy Dare Show. This is episode 128. I'm joined by a cool dude, Nick Hausman. He is owner and proprietor of The Rebellion Network. It's a new podcast network, and uh, they got a bunch of cool shows on the network. It's uh, Chicago-based, actually out of Wrigleyville, and I believe they tape all the podcast out of uh, Nick's studio, and it's a cool studio. I got to uh, check it out. I think it was about six weeks ago. I went and taped an episode of Jesse's World, and Jesse being Jesse Anderson, a a buddy of mine for like the last five years now, um, nice guy, he's Billy Corgan's brother, he's uh, also a big part of Resistance Pro Wrestling, and uh, that might be coming to an end soon as Billy has left that league, but uh, a lot of good times this summer checking out Resistance Pro, I learned a lot about the business, just being a fly on the wall uh, during these practices and whatnot and i learned a lot of you know the behind the scenes and how these how the business works so uh it was cool i want to thank jesse for letting me uh you know come with on some of those uh events and it was a great time at arabian nights horse barn hopefully they can uh, keep it going and uh all the best to resistance pro in 2015 and uh, do check them out, resistancepro.com. They're still buddies of mine, and uh, the Baron brothers are good dudes. Nick actually met Jesse through Resistance Pro, and, uh, yeah, he was a manager for Resistance Pro for about a year uh, in the early days of the of the promotion, and he's got a bunch of cool stories. Do check it out if you're slightly a fan of wrestling, if you're slightly a fan of podcasting, and uh, I would check it out. So it's a cool interview coming up. I want to thank Nick for taking the time out for chatting with me. So, uh, yeah. Also, uh, in other news, hung out with Jesse last week at the Smashing Pumpkins concert. It was kind of a cool uh, occurrence because, yeah, they announced the show on Monday morning and the show took place that Wednesday evening. So, what, a uh, little bit over 48 hours notice. And I guess the tickets went, uh, they sold out real quick, under a minute. And, yeah, I was planning on going to Craigslist and paying, you know, $150 for a concert ticket, which I rarely, rarely do. But it, since it's our hometown heroes, the Pumpkins, and, uh, you know, it's almost the end of the year, I thought, why not do it uh, big by uh, getting this ticket and going to check them out? But uh, lucked out. I had uh, previously tweeted to the venue that I was looking for tickets, maybe press passes, you know, since I write for Empty Lighthouse and I do this show, but nothing was happening. And then finally, the night before, I got a a tweet from Kristen Mitchell, who is the sister of probably my best friend out here. I won't mention his name. He doesn't like being on the Internet, but uh, he's a great dude and a cool sister. And it ends up that she works at Evanston Space, which is in cahoots or business partners with Thalia Hall. And uh, she gave me a couple awesome tickets. Want to thank Kristen. Check out her website, abeerwiththeband.com. And, uh, yeah, it's a cool podcast. Uh, or it's more of she writes articles about these guys. And uh, she'll check out the show, then uh, have a beer with the band and interview them afterwards. And what I have checked out, it's very cool. A lot of new bands, a lot of cool bands. Check it out if you're a fan of music, Chicago music scene, a beer with the And uh, yeah, it was a cool show. You know, Billy Corgan's first show with Brad Wilk on drums, you know, of Audio Slave and Rage Against the Machine. And also Mark from The Killers. Um, Not a humongous Killers fan, but he held his own and, uh, you know, was in the pocket. And uh, Jeff Schroeder, I guess he's been in the Pumpkins for about seven years now. And they've got their their sound is coalescing together. And it was a mix of classics and new songs off Monuments to an Elegy. That's their new album, which drops uh, December 9th. And what I've heard, I love the album. 
great show. Uh, a lot of cool uh, moments from it. I want to thank Jesse for uh, hanging out in the pit with me and my buddy Ryan. And uh, instead of being in VIP, it showed a little, you know, it was really nice of him. So I actually decided not to write a review on the show just because, you know, it was a cool thing that I got tickets. It was a cool thing that I got to hang out with the brother from the band. It's a cool thing altogether. And I don't really want to be totally objective to my reviews. So um, you won't be finding a review there, but this is my review. It was awesome. Go check out the new Pumpkins album. I know it's not the same members that you're used to, but Pumpkins have and always will be Billy Corgan with assorted different talented musicians, and they're all his songs. All the albums are all of his ideas, so do check it out. And yeah, great time at Thalia Hall, my second time going. And uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of a new place, but inside it looks really old and you know very classy. And uh, yeah, it said it's been around since 1892, so maybe it's a new, a newly renovated space or a, a newly named hall. I'm not sure, but uh, do check it out if you get a chance. I would definitely go see a show at Thalia Hall in Pilsen. So yeah, I figured uh, we'd be right back, and I'd uh, read you a little bit of my latest article from EmptyLighthouse.com after this. Yo. Jay Pox here from the Jay Pox Experience. Just here to remind you to keep it locked to the Andy Deer Show and all the other programming here on the fabulous Deer Network here in 2014. Jay Pox, Tyler Kale, Andy Deer. And we're back. Um, if you know anything about the show, it's been about the last nine months. I have been a writer for Empty Lighthouse, which is a cool new pop culture uh, blog, magazine type deal. And uh, they're good folks over there. It's an East Coast thing. Um, EmptyLighthouse.com. whole bunch of cool stuff over there. I just do the album reviews pretty much. I do some concert reviews as well. I like to keep in my wheelhouse. You know, I don't know about Chris Brown's new haircut or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, I pretty much stick to what I know at Empty Lighthouse. want to thank them for the opportunity. And, uh, yeah, my latest uh, article, I review Neil Young's new album, Story Tone. So here we go. Published uh, 30th of November, album review, Neil Young, Storytone, by Andy Dare. No artist can both baffle and intrigue like Neil Young. After releasing 2012's epic double album Psychedelic Pill with Crazy Horse, he published a memoir, Waging Heavy Peace, had a super successful Kickstarter launch for his audio player Pono, and then recorded a strange covers album, A Letter Home inside Jack White's 1947 vo voice o -graph vinyl recording booth. While that album didn't reward repeat listenings, you have to respect Neil for trying something different. Storytone comes on the heels of A Letter Home and Special Deluxe, a memoir of Life in Cars, a second autobiography. Special Deluxe is very different from Waging Heavy Peace in that instead of telling the whole story, Neil has sorted through his life by remembering every automobile his family has had since he was a young boy. Classic cars have always been a huge part of Neil's life. Can he be both a spokesman for envi environmentalism and a lover of classic cars? It turns out that he can. As part of his passion is, cr is the creation of Linkvolt, a 1959 Lincoln Continental converted into a hybrid power vehicle. Things haven't gone quite as planned for the Linkvolt as numerous prototypes have failed and the proposed documentary on the car was cut short after the producer Larry Johnson passed away in 2010. The new album is kind of a companion piece to Super Deluxe. Neil has even created beautifully sentimental drawings of all the vehicles mentioned in the book and one of those drawings acts, acts as a cover art to Storytone. The lyrics reflect a conflict between wanting to drive your car and wanting to keep the environment clean. This duality is something that makes Neil less preachy and gives him an everyman feel. Neil has always been an everyman. Even at the height of his success, he has always written from the perspective of a regular dude with regular problems. Alright, that's a, just a little excerpt. I thought a uh, little teaser. Check out the whole review at EmptyLighthouse.com. Just search Neil Young. It'll come right up. And uh, once again, just uh, follow them at Twitter, EMP Lighthouse. And uh, good folks over there. That about does it. Just want to uh, thank everybody for checking out everybody on Dare Network, Jay Pork's experience, 
every Tuesday night coming to you straight out of Staten Island, New York City. Um, you know, awesome concert tales, awesome uh, being a waiter, uh, lots of stories about being a waiter and just hating your life, but at the same time being saved by the sweet um, relief of music. And uh, the Jay Porks experience, follow him at Jay Porks. And uh, every Thursday, the Tyler Kale Show. If you're into doppelgangers, if you're into actors, actresses, the whole Hollywood lifestyle, Tyler Kale coming to you straight out of Los Angeles, California. Um, follow him at on Twitter and Instagram, T-Y-L-E-R k-a-h-l tyler kale and uh yeah thank you so much for checking out dare network going to itunes searching andy dare will give you every episode instantly it's free to subscribe want to thank all the marvelous sponsors want to thank nick hausman for uh being my humble guest today and uh thank you the listener without further ado my episode 128 interview with nick hausman Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out the Andy Dare Show. This is episode 128. I'm joined via phone by Nick Hausman. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, Andy. Thanks so much for having me on, man. I'm so privileged to be part of number 128. 128, <laughs> you know? Nice. Yeah, it's been a long, strange trip, but just thankful everybody's uh, stayed with me here. It's been about almost four years now. And uh, yeah, but recently I had uh, the pleasure of coming down to your studio in Wrigleyville, in the shadow of Wrigley, and... Uh, yeah, I got to go on Jesse's World. Um, cool show. Check it out. Um, brother of Billy Corgan, uh, part of Resistance Pro, now not so much. But, uh, yeah, it's a great show, a lot of great chats he's got on there, especially the Veterans Day thing. How did you end up uh, striking up that relationship with Jesse? Uh, good question. Yeah, um, Jesse and I know each other through Resistance Pro Wrestling, like you said. Uh, his brother, Billy, used to be a part of Resistance Pro, and uh, right when they started, uh, I was brought in as a, a manager to work with the Almighty Sheik, and after about um, about a year, year and a half of working with the company, um, Billy had just uh, well, actually, exactly what had happened was uh, I found out Jesse through some channels was uh, a fan of my work, and uh, asked Billy um, if Jesse had ever mentioned anything to him, and he said that him and Jesse were actually talking at the time, and um, if there was something I could do to maybe help bridge that relationship again and bring them back together you know he was all for it so huh. uh i wound up reaching out to jesse um through facebook which is funny because if you listen to a lot of jesse's stories he gets in a lot of trouble with uh, people that find him on facebook and try to become his friends and so sure. yeah. yeah i uh i i reached out to jesse and just said hey i heard you like my work you know why don't you come to an r pro show talk to your brother you know i heard you guys are talking and as soon as I brought Jesse in, in to talk to Billy again and see a show, I mean, Billy immediately paired Jesse with me in the wrestling world, and, you know, we worked together for a little bit in the ring, and as they say, the rest is history. We just became friends, you know? I don't do the wrestling thing with the resistance anymore. I don't I don't think he does. I'm not, I don't really know or not. You know, I don't really ask him if he's still with our pro or not. I know his brother's not. But uh, he was, yeah, act, he was acting podcast. like uh, that it's probably not going to be happening anymore. If Billy's not in it, he's probably not going to be in it. He said his character kind of like run, uh, you know, run out of ideas, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where because a lot of people, I, Andy, I'll give you a scoop. This is something nobody knows, I don't think. So my original idea for Jesse was that we were going to develop this uh, relationship between me and him where uh, I am this greedy drug addicted horrible person ronaldo pivot you know this absolute evil and i get my finger signed to this guy jesse corgan billy corgan's younger brother who's easily influenced by folks by myself and we were going to drag jesse into the dredges we were going to uh, you know around him with alcohol and, women and drugs and you know all that rock star stuff that his brother tried to keep him away from you know what i'm saying sure and so and so at the end of the day after several months of dragging jesse down and all this uh, Billy was going to come in, save the day, show, expose me for being this rat. Him and Jesse hug, uh, resolve their differences, and, and on goes life. That that was the plan, okay? So that's awesome. And yeah, right. It sounds like a simple plan. Well, then I took it a step further. I was like, well, you know what? The, and this is where this is where you get the scoop, Andy. This is where you get the never before told story. So I, I was sitting there thinking to myself, how can I really 
know, if, if I'm really trying to piss off Billy Corgan, how do I piss off Billy Corgan? You know, I'm I'm Ronaldo Piv, and I'm saying that to to your brother Billy. I'm saying to Jesse, I'm I'm your real friend. I'm gonna I'm gonna treat you the way that your brother never treated you. So I was like, well, you know, Jesse would probably want to be surrounded by another multi-platinum, very successful recording artist, right? And so who was another multi-platinum record-selling recording artist that happens to like pro wrestling? You know, I pondered that much to myself. Andy, can you think of any other entities that maybe love pro wrestling and have sold a lot of music albums? I'm trying to even think right now. I mean, Kiss, uh, yeah, Gene yeah, Simmons, yeah. no? no? No, I mean, they did that demon gimmick in WCW, but... Yeah, I, I couldn't get a hold of Kiss, and, and I don't think they'd be interested, though. No, but I do have connections with the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the, the Juggalos. Juggalo Championship Wrestling. And so I went to – and I have friends that work for the clowns. Um, so I knew I had a, a bridge there. But before I started crossing this bridge into the Juggalos, I reached out to Billy. I said, Billy, what would you think of Piven teaming up with the clowns, you know, Shaggy – and what was their name? Shaggy Two Dope and the other one, the other Violent Murder J. Clown, Violent J. Violent, Violent J. Murder Clown Number Two. <laughs> you know what if what if me and the Murder Clowns, we we convinced Jesse that, that we're cool, you know, and you're not. You're an idiot. You're a bald asshole. Okay, I don't know if I curse on your show. I apologize. You can. Yeah. But uh, oh, okay, great. So uh, Billy's like, oh yeah, you know that could actually be fun. You know, let's see what happens. So Billy gave this I Billy knew about this idea and he, he kind of gave it his blessing, you know. Yeah. So I actually reached out to the clowns, got all the way to the top of their management chain, was talking to top murder clown. Not not the Shaggy or the Violet J, but their business top murder clown, you know. Yeah. Okay. And and uh he was all for it. Um we started scripting it out. Billy was not liking some of the details of it and then uh, one of my connections there started kind of flaking a little bit, and then it just all fell apart. Oh. It just didn't. Ha- it was one of those tragic things, and then I was gone from Resistance. I think a week or so after that, um, it just totally <laughs> fell apart. But the world needs to know there was almost at their height of our pro on our pro Juggalo Championship Wrestling feud, and it was going to be so epic. <laughs> I just was so excited about this, and nobody ever knew it was happening, you know? That would have been killer. That would have been mind-blowing, and especially now that they've been doing these events out here in the suburbs near me, this Arabian Nights horse barn, I feel yeah. like those would eat that up with a spoon, you know? They would they would love that. Oh, I feel Jesse, like <laughs> yeah, Jesse with the, the clown makeup on, you know, and he's all excited, you know, like to be a part of the Juggalos, and then I'm there as Piven, and I'm like doing cocaine, you know, like it would be so messed up, so incredibly messed up. And that's why I would think that there would be this, you know, because eventually what would happen is Piven and the clowns would do something that very flagrantly was taking advantage of Jesse, and Jesse would realize it, and then that's when Billy would step in, you know. But you could take sure. it, you could take it so far, so, so far. You know, it's like it almost wrote itself. It's, That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like such a, it's such an, it's still kind of upsetting to me that it, it didn't kind of come together. But, you know, maybe down the line, you know, anything's possible with professional wrestling. And uh, have, now uh, you've now linked up with a different uh, program right now. Uh, are you you're sponsoring it through the Rebellion Network or? Yeah. I mean, well, I, I love pro wrestling and I did pro wrestling for a number of years as Ronaldo Piven and um, freelance wrestling is a promotion here in Chicago that's run by a guy named Matt Nix. Sure. And it, fe- it features uh, a lot of some of the, the best independent names in the Midwest. You got Darren Corbin, Melanie Cruz, Rough Crossing, Eric Cannon. Um, I mean, it just goes on and on. And they got Zima Ion coming on now and faces Isaiah Velasquez and they do a late night, you know, drink friendly, hard hitting, say anything, do anything type show. Um, and it's a rock and wrestling show. And I, I went and I did it and loved it. And yes. Uh, we've become an official sponsor. We're going to be doing a live podcast with Zima Ion from Team Impact before their next show, which is going to be about a week, December 12th at the Abbey pub. You can go online at the Abbey pub, buy your tickets for that. Come on out. Nice. And, and uh, it's just, you know, if you haven't seen Freelance, you know, I'm I'm probably not the guy to talk to. You should have Matt Nix on your show. He'll give you a hell of a story about the story of freelance wrestling. Uh, but it is really fun. And then, of course, th- this past weekend, uh, Saturday, uh, I returned to uh, Blitz Pro Wrestling in Juliet as Ronaldo Piven. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. 
I first my first wrestling show in about 18 months, and uh, it went very well. Everyone still hates me. Nice. And <laughs> they they threw a few more dates at me to come back and perform, and we're kind of working out the details. But it looks like uh, I will be hopefully you know sponsoring freelance. I don't really know what my in ring future holds with freelance. We haven't really broached that bridge, but um, with Blitz, definitely yeah, they came back and offered me a chance to kind of mess around and continue to do what I love, and so we'll see where it goes. So. That, that's cool. Yeah, I heard your interview with Chris Castro and Matt Nix. I met both those guys when I was uh, doing – I would spend, like, the whole day at Resistance and just kind of soak it in, and then uh, I'd wait for Billy's, you know, big speech to the whole – you know, the, all the wrestlers and stuff. That was cool, being a fly on the wall. And, uh, yeah, but, like, Matt Nix, it was funny. He's like – everybody was talking about going to the Billy Joe concert, which was kind of strange. You wouldn't think that would be hip with them. But I, he's like, yeah, I could, I could almost just reach out and give a high five. I was that close. And I'm like, dude, how did you get those seats? He goes, oh, I work security at Wrigley. And I was like, oh, <laughs> now it all makes sense. Cool. They're, hu- they're hustlers, man. I mean, that's why I love working with Matt Nix because he's young, he's motivated, he doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke. Uh, he's really funny. He's good with people. Um, sure. And, you know, he's a hustler. You know, he knows how to get into places and get people's attention and grab their ear and is not afraid to do it. And there's a lot of people in pro wrestling, especially young guys. Um, and as Vince McMahon would say to Steve Austin, it's the millennials. What's up with these millennials? You know, they want everything handed to them. Uh, but Matt Nix isn't a guy that waits for things to get handed to him. There's nothing else. He's definitely a guy uh, that likes to go out and, and take what he wants, try, try to figure out a way to get things going, you know? Yeah, it um, seems like, like in this sport, you've really got to be a go-getter because, I mean, like the minute you start sleeping, they're going to find the next new kid and then put him on, and then you're out of a job. It seems it seems like it's a bit, qu- quite a quick turnover in wrestling. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, it's a quick turnover, but just like you said, you know, it's they, uh, they bring in somebody new and you're on the side. Well, you should try to, in my opinion, and maybe this is the business guy in me, become the they. You know, yeah. don't wait. Don't wait to become somebody to be this transition. If at all possible, you know, mark your territory, find some space you can call your own, and then nobody can get rid of you. I mean, that's one of the reasons I started the Rebellion Network was just I was frustrated working for all these theaters in Chicago and for pro wrestling companies and wherever else I was working for, selling walking bathtubs or American Girl dolls or whatever the hell else sure. I was doing. <laughs> nice. so, so, somebody else is making money off of my back. And uh, I kind of had this epiphany, you know, when I was about 27, 28, that I needed to start creating my own plot of land you know, that I could claim and nobody could take from me and that I had free reign to do whatever I wanted with. And I call it the Rebellion Network. For Matt Nix, it's freelance wrestling. And, sure. you know, in my opinion, that is the the best way for anyone to, to take care of themselves is to just have that plot of land. Become a homeowner in your future, <laughs> in your creative future, you know? It, it's so true. And, like, for years I did the radio thing all the way back since high school, and then I – podcasts hit in about 2008 2009 so i got one called the flea cast and uh yeah we had some big interviews like with steve albini and stuff like that but i was yeah i was doing the booking of the guests i was doing a lot of the bits myself coming with a lot of material on sunday morning when the rest everybody is hung over you know and stuff i was hung over too but i still had the material and the bits but then i'm like you know what why am i uh putting my ass out there and i'm not getting you know 100 percent back let's just do the andy dare show and it's been a slow grow, but it's been a blast, and I uh, continue to do it, and I'm looking to do it, you know, hopefully till the rest of my life, you know, so having a blast. And it's so cool to hear you say that, because, like, you know, that's, you, you found that, that zenith, you know, that nirvana, and, you know, maybe, you know, you're going to become very, very famous, you know, Andy, you could be. I, I think you're a really nice guy, and nobody gets to choose who's famous, you know, it did True. kind of happen, <laughs> you know, but if you do good work, and you do quality work, and you're good to yourself and the people around you, you have a better chance than most. And um, I, I totally believe that. You know, if awesome. you've got good equipment, you've got a good personality, you know, and you're not the people, you've got a hell of a lot better chance than all the assholes running around, in my <laughs> opinion. Because assholes will pop off from time to time, and they will make something of themselves, and they'll make it really shitty for everyone around them because, again, they are assholes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, in my experience, the people at the top, the successful people, the people that you really do respect and you want to grow up and meet, are genuinely across the board some pretty great fucking people. Yeah. Um, you can't, you can't, you can't get, you can't get to where you want to be in your head if you know. In my opinion, you aren't good to the people around you. You know. It's true. Yeah, um, but that that speaks in you know, <clears throat> that speaks well for itself. 
This episode of The Andy Dare Show is brought to you in part by Uncle Bub's award-winning barbecue in Westmont, Illinois. Family owned and operated since 1997, Uncle Bub's is the real deal barbecue. A family friendly restaurant open seven days a week. Also, it's a full service catering company doing weddings, pig roasts, luau's, grill packages, you name it. They have a friendly, helpful staff that will make sure that your party goes off without a hitch. Call them at 630 493 9000. Visit them at 132 South Cass Avenue in Westmont, Illinois, and UncleBubs.com. Hey man, I know you like grilling. I know you like getting those dark grill marks on your burgers, fish, chicken. And I know you don't want to just dry your meat out like you're cooking with a hairdryer. Why not get the man grate and click through the AndyDareShow.com's banner so we can keep the lights on here at Honeycomb Hideout Studios in gorgeous Westmont, Illinois. The man grate. This episode of the Andy Dare Show is brought to you in part by Record Utopia. A music lover's dream with thousands of vinyl records, musical instruments, and sound gear. They buy, sell, and trade. Give them a call at 630-963-1957. Visit them in Westmont, Illinois at 309 West Ogden Avenue on the web at recordutopia.com. It's always a good, relaxed atmosphere. Check them out. Record Utopia. And, uh, yeah, but you've been doing this new uh, network. How long have you been doing it? And, uh, yeah, maybe we could go over a couple of the other shows besides Jesse's World. Sure. Yeah. I mean, of course, Jesse's World. Uh, we we uh, talk. Uh, the Rebellion Network right now it's four podcasts, um, but of course we do like the live shows before the freelance wrestling shows, and we're looking to do a few more live shows in the new year, just comedy stuff. Um, but it's four podcasts right now. It's Jesse's World with Jesse. We have uh, Jamie Campbell, who was in 2013 best friend up in Chicago from the Chicago Reader, and he's got a few other nice uh, credentials under his belt and he just signed a new record deal for his comedy album to get released and nice. he's popping off in his own right but that's jamie campbell he hosts his show talk hard which is like your show and it's like my show the are in the cows and you find friends and guests and you try to bring people on that you think are going to make your show in the scene or hopefully newsworthy and uh does that and he finds those people and he's been doing a great job He's our longest-running show on the network. He's uh, just finished the six-month mark. I encourage you to go subscribe to him on iTunes. Hard. He's actually currently right now in the studio interviewing Jesse. So Jesse's <laughs> in my studio right now. Nice. I'm in this room. He's next door. Podcast in the other room with Jamie. Jamie's never done a podcast with Jesse, so this is a this is like a crossover for them. His show and, and Jamie's show coming together. It's like the same and, family guy coming together. Yeah, that's cool. Huh. Yeah, it's a lot better. That was terrible. <laughs> yeah, that um, was I heard. <laughs> terrible, terrible. But, yeah, my show, uh, you know, The Rebellion with Nick Housen, also on iTunes, is, uh, you know, mostly pro wrestling based here in Chicago right now just because I have a lot of cool pro wrestling friends and occasionally we get some comics and magicians in there. And um, and then, yeah, the last show is Mr. and Mrs. Smith Talk Relationships. So if you're looking for a fun uh, relationship dating show to get into with your significant other, check out Mr. and Mrs. Smith Talk Relationships. They're a married couple, and they're both comics here in the city of Amelia Ava. And friends of mine, they wanted to do this relationship show real bad, and I gave them a platform. And um, while it doesn't sound, uh, you know, because they, you know, they bring on guests, and they have very interesting guests and stuff, too. But this dating show, this gimmick that they've got going, is the highest rated show on our network. <laughs> nice. You hear a show like you hear a show like the Rebellion Network, and you're like, oh, it's going to be all gritty and punk rocky, you know. Sure. And, uh, and then the number one shows is this playful relationship show, and <laughs> and nice. for me, it's, I, I mean that's that's great because I think that you know you say something like the Rebellion, and people think, oh, it's just going to be this very confrontational, confrontational, aggressive thing and sure. for me the rebellion is just the battle for joy you know we're all just trying to have a good time wake up each day want to get up want to go to our work want to get out of bed whatever it may be and hopefully these shows if you're just looking for something to kill some time and you just want to keep your spirits up that's the kind of entertainment we put out and so you know that's and it's, the rebellion it's so is. nice just listen at your leisure just put it on your phone take it with you on the train or on your commute and it's a great way to kill time have you got mm-hmm. any it is the only sponsor that freelance wrestling or do you are you going to look for any other sponsors in the new year or well we sponsor freelance right now um i don't know who else we're i mean i, I don't want to i don't want to say too much but we we're not going to be sponsoring any other wrestling said because i don't think formally immediately but don't quote me on that for gospel 
Um, but uh, one of the people we are looking really to, to court and bring in as sponsors and work closer with in the new year is the uh, Chicago breweries, the craft breweries in Chicago. There's a, about 45 to 50 uh, craft breweries set up in the city um, that are making beer and selling them out to local distributors in, in and around the area. And I want to get all those stories. I, I love craft beer. I love the story of craft beer. I love every time I hear a guy go, I was working at a desk, you know, data <laughs> yeah. entry all fucking day. And then I went home one time and my buddy Ted and I had been making beer out of our garage. And we both just said, fuck it. Let's do this and quit our jobs, you know. And we, and we put some barley and oats into a Hinkley and Schmidt thing, and then waited three weeks, and that was our first batch, and that was Sam Adams in 1982 or something. You know, and, it's a good story. I liked it. <laughs> and I took my keyboard off my desk and I threw it out the window, and I said, "I only work with kegs now." <laughs> Told the boss to shove it, and yeah, started his own brewery. I think that would be great. And I always had that idea: do a craft beer podcast with these, you know, small business owners. Uh, and then, don't take my ideas. You and no, and, yeah, then then somebody that knows how to drink well. <clears throat> and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, have them uh, well, shoot the shit. Let's, talk, be let's talk off the air. Let's talk off the air. We say too much on these other podcasts out there. They're gonna start getting ideas, Andy. I don't want that to happen. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But I mean, it is. You know, I mean, let's let's be frank. A, a podcast about crap brews, especially in the Chicago area. Um, that's that. I I'd fucking listen to that. That's why I want to produce it. So. Nice. Uh, well, maybe, but that's again, yeah, it's, yeah. it's your plot of land to do what you want with and find shows that you find interesting, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed myself coming down to the studio. It was a nice vibe over there. And uh, yeah, maybe we should talk sometimes in the new year. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll pitch you an idea or something if you're looking to grow the network. And then I'll, not my show, but maybe I'll do something else for you guys or something. Yeah, so. yeah let's, talk, let's talk beer. I've already made some inroads with some of the breweries here in the city. Okay. Uh, again, top, top secret stuff. If people keep attention on the rebelliannetwork.com. It will, in the cool. in the coming months, all make more sense. So. Sounds good. So yeah, Jesse's World new episode. They're uh, talking about pumpkins. They're talking about uh, the show last week at Thalia Hall. Um, I lucked out. I was going to spend $150 on a Craigslist ticket since it sold out in a in a minute. And uh, then I got hit up by my best friend's sister who works for. Uh, a, a venue that owns Thalia Hall called Evanston Space, and she says, you want two free tickets? And I said, yes, please. So, yeah, I got down there and uh, enjoyed myself. And, uh, yeah, Jesse's a good guy. You're a good guy. Um, Yeah, the rebellionnetwork.com, right? Yeah, that's, that's us. Okay, cool. And uh, you're on Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I give all the info, but you can go to our website. It's easy to find, um, you know. Support us the best you can. I always say subscribe or share. You know, that's the best way to share your support. So. Tell a friend, right? Yeah. Yeah, tell a friend, subscribe it, share it around, you know. All easy, right. Easy, Jap- good. Japanese-y. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yes. Any last words, Nick? No, that, that's about it. Um, thanks so much, Andy, for having me on. I always like talking about the network and helping to spread the message, and uh, hopefully we cross paths more here in 2015. All right. Sounds good. On behalf, on behalf of Nick Hausman, this is Andy signing off. For the Andy Darer Show. Be sure to follow Andy on Twitter. That's at Andy Darer. And like our show on Facebook. That's Facebook.com slash The Andy Darer Show. Videos at YouTube.com slash Andrew Martin Darer. And we're on iTunes. Just search The Andy Darer Show. Please leave a review. Thanks so much to our wonderful sponsors. Uncle Bub's award-winning barbecue. Record Utopia. The Man Great. And Amazon.com. Theme song courtesy of Rich Banks Music. Thank you so much for checking out The Andy Dare Show. TheAndyDareShow.com